Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. Welcome to Maddox AI and Customer Success Summit. Uh, you are currently enjoying the workshop of how to use uh, AI to create and repurpose content. Um, I'm excited to introduce our uh, speaker today. And um, we're going to also go through an icebreaker question. Um, and looking forward to this answer. Uh, we have Matt Sullivan, a technical account manager here at Matic. And what would you use AI to automate in your life outside of work? Um, I think if I could use AI to automate anything outside of work, I would definitely use it to automate cleaning my house. If I could figure that out and get a robot to, to figure out what needs to be cleaned, I think that would take a lot of stress away from, from me and my, my wife from doing it. So I think that would definitely be the number one thing that I would pick. That is a great answer. Um, I, I think I could use that too. Um, just a reminder before we start off today, um, any questions that you have throughout this session, uh, Matt will take breaks uh, as he's going through things and answer them to make sure that um, no one gets lost. Um, so just add those into the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, um, should be in the control panel and we will get to those. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Matt. Thank you, Hannah. Uh that was a wonderful intro and I, I love the question too. Uh, but welcome everyone else also to this workshop where we're gonna learn how to use AI to create and repurpose content. So we've got a couple of activities today. Uh, uh, the first one being is we're gonna do a chat GPT exercise. So we're gonna go to chat GPT, uh, do a couple of prompts, play around with it a little bit to see how we can leverage just the open AI uh, website to help do some tasks around customer success, like creating agendas and things like that. And then after that, we're gonna be jumping into Google for a Google presentation to use our extension, the presentation enhancer, which will help us uh, analyze the entire uh, presentation and create talk tracks and executive summaries. And then the next step will be build it using the content builder exercise, which will generate a one pager based off of the website you provided in company uh, to help you get started on creating some materials that you can leverage uh, for customer success, uh, especially a one pager. And then finally, we're gonna end it with a Q&A uh, and uh, looking forward to all of these uh, exercises. There are gonna be lots of interesting stuff in here and a lot of fun. So for this uh, workshop, we're kind of doing this crawl, walk, run method. So that first exercise is you know really easy to do. We're just gonna log into ChatGPT, give it some prompts, uh, respond to it, uh, mold it a little bit more. And then the walking one, uh, walking will be, uh, you know, jumping into the presentation enhancer where we're using the extension and the add-on to create some executive uh, summaries and talk tracks, like I said. And then finally, we're gonna be running away with the uh, presentation builder uh, that'll just generate a one pager based off of your website. So for the first exercise, you uh, you all should have had uh, the help article link that gives you kind of the, the pre-work to help you get started. So for this first exercise, all you need to do is have a ChatGPT account. Uh, ChatGPT, if you're not familiar with it, I'm sure a lot of you are since you're at the AICS Summit, but it's an AI-powered chatbot that has recently gained some significant attention uh, for it, its responses and or, or its articulate responses and uh, from just providing input. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try some different prompts to kind of play with it a little bit. Uh, so first things first, just log into your chat GPT account. If you haven't created one, it's really easy. You just gotta use, uh, give it your email and it'll get you in there right away. Uh, and then we're gonna provide the AI with some context. And we've got a couple of prompts here too, to get you, help you get you started. So we'll go through a couple of these. Uh, so I'll give everyone just a, a few seconds while I go over to ChatGPT myself to get ready. Uh, so for this first prompt, uh, we're going to ask the ChatGPT, can you create an agenda for a renewal conversation? Pretty simple prompt, but we're going to, we're going to uh, add some more stuff to it and see how the AI kind of works with you. It's kind of a very uh, good, you get good things in. If you put good things in, you get good things out. So let's just go ahead and get started. So when you when you ask it for uh, an agenda, it kind of gives you just a very, 
you know, robust, but very generic uh, agenda for, you know, a, a renewal conversation. So stuff about the current agreement, achievement results, feedbacks and insights. This is all really good starting place, but it's not really focused on what my my industry is. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit more information to this prompt by asking or telling it a little bit about myself and the industry that I work in. You uh, create a an agenda for a renewal conversation. I am a technical account manager at Matic that automates presentations with data driven content for an executive audience. So what I'm doing here is, you know, giving it some more context around what I, what my position is, what the company I work for does and who the audience is. This allows it to really shape and uh, give a really specific agenda for, uh, for your use case. And you can see here, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff uh, that is focused around what Matic does, which is, you know, data-driven presentation benefits, uh, demonstration of new features because it, it knew that I'm in a more tech industry. So we have those types of things. Uh, so it, it definitely helps you kind of shape and mold the agenda as well. And, you know, this is really great. Uh, you know, I think as a starting point too, like with ChatGPT and AI and stuff that you really want to just take what it gives, but then also mold it to your, you know, your persona or like just take the best bits and pieces. You don't have to just copy and paste this right into your agenda. And this just really kind of helps you get started and also up levels your your interaction with those uh, with those customers as well. Uh, so for the second prompt we're going to play with today, we're gonna uh, we're gonna ask it around what are some good metrics for customer success tracking. Again, like we're starting off with a really simple query, and we're gonna add some more information and context to the AI to kind of give it. Uh, a better understanding of what we're trying to get at for these types of, of metrics. So again, you know, some really great stuff in here at first, like I ha happily used, you know, customer satisfaction and NPS scores, uh, as well as uh, uh, customer lifetime value in my, in my decks to focus on for giving value back to uh, your clients. But I want to give it a little bit more context again. Uh, what are some good oh, I'll do this a little thing I'll just copy this from up here tracking uh country sick tracking in our four matic a presentation automation with data uh matic that creates presentations with data-driven content. Uh, again, let's, let's focus for an executive audience. And uh, so now you see that after giving it just a little bit more context, it has some really greatly more focused uh, metrics that we can really pull from and uh, really focus on. So things that, you know, we use at Matic ourselves, uh, you know, presentation completion rate, uh, time spent on the platform, so how much you're using it, uh, the number of data sources integrated, uh, just a lot of things that are, you know, really, really great uh, that we ourselves pull into our decks on our own metrics. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause there. Uh, I'm gonna see see if there's any uh, questions that uh, you uh, might have uh, for for around this uh, walk portion portion of the workshop. And if there's not any questions, we can just move right along. No questions, Matt. Awesome. All right. Well, let's. Hop back on over to our presentation here. 
Uh, so this is the walk portion of the presentation. Uh, and uh, we're gonna be talking about the presentation enhancer. Uh, so the presentation enhancer is a free, uh, uh, free Google Slides add-on that utilizes AI to automate executive summaries, uh, as well as like a talk track uh, uh, for each individual slide. Uh, so again, if you reference your, uh, the help article that was provided beforehand, you should have a link to be able to download the extension for Google Suite. Uh, hopefully you have a Google Suite account created already or use the one that uh, you already have. And uh, again, if you don't have these things ready, it's okay. We uh, will be recording these and sharing these recordings later. So you can tr go ahead and try this uh, you know, on your own time as well. Uh, so once you, uh, so once you have your know, your if you have a, also if you have a PowerPoint presentation, you should be able to upload it to Google Suites uh, to be able to use the uh, presentation and answer uh, as well. So with that, let's uh, hop on over to the presentation and answer and the the um, presentation I have queued up. So once you are inside Google Suites and you have your presentation open like this to, and your add-on is installed, simply go to extensions uh, and scroll down to presentation enhancer and open up enhanced presentation. Uh, you'll see the pop-up or the add-on pop-up on right-hand side here, and you'll have two options. You'll either be able to generate an executive summary or get a talk track for the current slides. Uh, the Executive summary takes a look at the entirety, entire presentation, whereas the talk track just looks at the individual slide here. So the first part of this exercise, let's try creating an executive summary. Uh, inside the executive summary option, uh, you have some options here to uh, play with the style and the persona and the, out, the format output as well. Uh, so in the style, you can change it from confident to formal or friendly or informal. Uh, for this use case, you know, we're giving it to an executive audience. We'll probably want to have it a little bit more confident uh, as well as the persona. We want to stick with executive, but there is other personas in here, seller, leader, champion as well. Like I, like I said before, it's good to give context uh, to the AI to kind of get the best out of it. So with the format output being bulleted list or a paragraph or one sentence for this use case, I want a bulleted list. And now that I have that set up, I'll just go ahead and hit generate executive summary. And the really important thing about, or the really benefit about this uh, enhancer and leveraging AI uh, in general for this specific use case is you're really saving a lot of time. Instead of having to go through the entire presentation yourself, you can let the AI read through it, give you know those top level key points or key takeaways to be able to share with you know your audience. So. We've had different use cases where this works really well uh, before the meeting, sending it in a preamble with the email for, before the QBR, as well as during the QBR, kind of giving you a highlight of what key points to focus on throughout the meeting. And then also in a follow, I, and also is very helpful in the follow-up email to kind of summarize what the presentation was focused on and what, to, uh, what points you wanted to take away from it. And so, you know, not only is it saving you time, on you know going through the entire deck yourself, but it's also saving your audience's time. Like if uh, if they can just read through a quick summary and key points and takeaways from uh, they can take away from the presentation. And you know uh, once once you have that executive summary, it's great to kind of tweak it a little bit to your own style, your own uh, your own. Like I said before, like you don't want to just kind of like copy paste it and bring it in, you kind of want to uh, make sure it's in your own um, persona. So it's finished running here. I'll go ahead and give this a copy. Uh, I'm gonna add in a slide here just so that we can uh, post it and kind of uh, give or create an executive summary. So like I said before, it's great to have it as a beforehand to give uh, the audience an expectation or what to expect when they're joining the meeting, as well as you know using it as an executive summary slide like I'm doing here to be able to give them an idea or give them uh, you know uh, an idea what to expect uh, in the meeting upcoming. So I'll go ahead and just 
do a little formatting so this will fit the page. Now, looking at this, you know, it's really great. It has some really great key points and great takeaways, but I'm not really liking how long the sentences are here where with the presentation enhancer, you're actually able to either make it longer or shorter. And when you do this, it also is not as long as the first time. Uh, it, it is reusing what it already had created to just create a more condensed version of this. So uh, I've gone ahead and hit uh, make shorter and it's gonna give me kind of a shorter version of this uh, executive summary that I can stick in here that's you know not as wordy uh, as the current output was. As you can see here though, in the executive summary, you know it has a lot of um, data points as well. You can see the number of provisions license, uh, provision licenses or users and such, as well as ROI, uh, really, really important stuff when it comes to uh, uh, executive business review. So I've got my new executive summary here. I've got a copy of it and I'm gonna go right ahead and paste this in here. And there it is just a little bit more concise, uh, which fits better within an act a single slide of the deck. Uh, I'm gonna pause there real quick. Was there any questions? Yes, we have one. Um, does the presentation enhancer, enhancer reference photos slash screenshots or does it have to be like type data or inserted graphs to generate complete executive summaries? Uh, so I believe at this time it, it focuses mostly on the text uh, and it does pull in the images as well. And it also is able to look at the data underlying the chart, um, which is, you know, needed to be able to kind of give that full analysis. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. So there we go. We we have our executive summary. Uh, we're happy with this. We might send this in a, a preamble email or uh, after as a post uh, summary email to kind of remind them of the, the points covered in our executive business review. That's great. That's an executive summary for our entire presentation. But let's go on, go ahead and try to create some talk tracks for some of our more uh, for some of our single slides. So here's a, a benchmark slide with some data as well as um, as well as some uh, stats here on the over on the right hand side. I'll go ahead and hit back on the executive summary and click into the Git talk track uh, for current slide. Similar setup to the executive summary. You can choose the style, uh, persona, and format as well. Uh, for this one. I think we want to keep it pretty similar to our uh, previous uh, summary where we have the confidence style and the executive persona with the bulleted list. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit generate talk track. And what's nice about this is, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it's going to highlight the key points and the key takeaways from the, the slide as well as uh, Sager's uh, CSM some time not having to dig into the data itself. And then what you can do here is you can go ahead and just copy it once it's finished uh, generating. And uh, it's much faster than doing the entire executive summary, but you can post it in the speaker notes just so you can save it here. And this gives you your CSM a uh, really good, uh, you know, key points to talk about what's in the slide, what to focus on, and just generally like what, you know, what is great. And what's awesome about you leveraging this AI, it, it sort of up levels everybody to the same point of analysis. So, you know, not everyone is a data scientist when it comes to these types of uh, presentations and leveraging AI allows you to really up level your analysis or bring everyone kind of that same plane of just the same consistent analysis that, you know, would see across the board. It's really, really um, a beneficial tool around just uh, just making sure that you have consistent messaging, uh, consistent analysis, and um, just saving time as well. Uh, so that is pretty much, um, you know, the, the presentation enhancer for the executive summary, as well as the side check, uh, or side tra talk track uh, as well. I am gonna pause here. Is there any more questions around the presentation enhancer or the slide track uh, creator? Or it's all in one, but yeah. Matt, 
Yes, a few are coming in. Uh, first, does this work at all with corporate templates, fonts, colors, et cetera, or is the focus exclusively on content? Does it work with all corporate templates, fonts. So uh, the focus is, uh, it, it, it can be any presentation can be used with presentation enhancer. I think if I understand your question correctly, mm -hmm. uh, it only really focuses on the content of the slide itself. So it can be any format, any font, uh, but it's just gonna pull the, the, the key points and key stats uh, pulled away. So we've tested this extensively on, in many different companies and different presentations, and they all uh, uh, pretty much pull that, the, the data only. Great. And one more. Um, are there any security concerns for companies integrating with uh, Matic reading our slide? So uh, we at Matic are very security conscious. We want to make sure that we are only processing your data and we're not saving it. Uh, that is still very consistent with our message with these new AI products. Uh, we have a security statement we're happy to share with you. But uh, according to OpenAI's own uh, statement around the API, they only will process the data and not save it uh, for either training purposes or others. And that's why we feel comfortable leveraging these types of tools uh, for these uh, for within our company as well. We still wanna be very uh, just data processing and, and not storing any data, uh, data at all. Great, thanks Matt. I, that's all the questions that are in there so far. Um, and. Spencer just dropped the security link in the chat if anyone would like that. And um, if you think of any questions, please go ahead and add them to the Q&A or uh, check out the help the cheat sheet doc with some help as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we're going to go right along to the run portion of the workshop, the most exciting one. I, I'm very excited for this. This is our uh, going to be on the AI template builder. Uh, you know, this is really, really valuable. You, we are, you're going to be able to walk away from here with a one pager uh, and or email template that you can use uh, and give to your company, to, you know, for time savings and things like that. Uh, and, you know, to be used across multiple touch points and multiple personas. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, if you've already have a, so we're going to have to create a Matic cell, uh, Matic account. Uh, for our, our free version of the of the platform, our trial version, I mean. And so what this means is if you already have a Matic account, uh, you cannot use that same email. So you can either use uh, uh, a variation of your work email or another email if you, if you so choose. But I'll show you how to use your current Matic email if you, if you already have a Matic account. So I'm going to, and you, uh, the link for the sign up should be in the help article as well. Uh, and somebody should be sharing that in the chat um, uh, too. So once you go to the sign up page here, go ahead and enter in your name and enter in the email that you would like to use. If the email is used in other Matic accounts like mine is, uh, there is a way to kind of create a secondary account by adding a plus sign in between your email name and the at symbol. So I'm going to add a plus sign at the end of Sullivan and do AICS for the AICS Summit. I'm going to create a password here. And then once you have those, uh, those ready, go ahead and click uh, agree for the service agreement and the privacy policy and hit sign up. There's a, a short survey that we're gonna be asking you. So that we're gonna ask a few questions. If you can just go ahead and fill that out for us and then we can jump right in. And so my job title, technical account manager for Matic, our company size and what my function is. I'll go ahead and hit continue. Uh, so for once you're signed in, make sure to go ahead and hit the top left Matic uh, icon to bring yourself to the home page. Once you are there, you should see the four options here for create new template. And we're going to be focusing on the AI template builder today. Uh, 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click into here. And just uh, just another reminder, you know, um, if you're having trouble uh, creating an account and or getting this in, we're gonna be recording, this is going to be a recorded session. You, you, all the materials that we're, we have here will be shared with you afterwards and you'll be able to test this on your own time. Uh, once you hit the AI template builder, it's gonna ask you to sign into Google. Uh, just go ahead and hit allow uh, for all of the options here. This is going to allow us to connect to your Google account to be able to drop the presentation in there. Once you've uh, allowed access to Google, we'll, you'll be brought to this AI template builder page where you can enter in uh, information for the template builder. What you'll need is just the name of the company and the website for my particular um, example today, I'm going to be using one of my favorite customers, Service Titan. So I go ahead and hit uh, or enter in their company website here and their name up here. And once you have that, those two pieces of information generated in there, uh, you can go ahead and hit generate presentation. This should take, um, roughly around uh, uh, three to five minutes. Uh, some may take or be sooner, some may take a little longer, uh, but it should uh, should generate all the same. And while that is loading, I'd love to just take some time to talk about, you know, some of the benefits of what and why, you know, you, we decided to use one pager and wire and what we use one pages for in our own, uh, our own uh, business flow. So, we use one pages because they are just really easy to digest that you can really highlight those key metrics in a single document um, and, you know, be able to share that with any stakeholder from executive to your admins or uh, your, your key points of contact, as well as just summarizing all those really, really important KPIs. We at Matic use it um, in almost every facet of the business uh, or the customer journey from sales all the way to adoption. Uh, we we use it for engagement on ROI. We use it for cold email campaigns, uh, follow ups, check ins, year and year and reviews. We, there's a ton of applications for uh, using a one pager, and really really beneficial to to have this type of document in your rep repertoire. It really helps you know uh, keep that consistent messaging as well. Uh, as well, and you know, really resonates with the customer. With the template builder itself, it actually will take the you know styles and colors of your website and gleam also what you know what metrics would be important to that particular industry, and automatically builds that into the template and using like your colors and stuff like that. So, I I think that if you bring this back to your enablement team or your marketing team, whoever helps you make your decks to your customers. They'll be thoroughly impressed that you were able to just automatically create a one pager for for your use case of you know just check ins or this QBR condensed. Uh, I think that'll be like a really really awesome thing, and I I would assume that they'd be thoroughly impressed. Uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and check up on our template builder and see how we're doing. Awesome. So it's. It's gone and generated. I'm gonna go ahead, if you double click into uh, the presentation itself, you can kind of get uh, an idea of what uh, this looks like. So in here, we have the review, we have Service Titans um, logo up top. We've got uh, their name is, uh, this is a piece of dynamic content that we that basically automatically pulls in their name. We've got the three different KPIs up here, uh, as well as you know uh, certain categories uh, stuff down here. If you're seeing this uh, lorem ipsum, uh, that means that you know uh, it's just kind of like a placeholder for you to uh, be able to replace that with you know KPIs that you think are important, uh, and as well as you know give the 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 important key points you want to pass along to you know based off of QBRs and executive summaries. Uh, just a quick uh, check in. Is there any questions that are, are, are waiting? 
we don't have any questions right now. I just want to take a moment to remind everyone that uh, I know sometimes this is a lot to follow along with, uh, with different internet speeds and everything. Um, but the uh, cheat sheet, you'll have access to that after the session, um, as well as when the recording is live, you'll have access to that um, to follow along with too. Um, I know that uh, I may be skipping ahead, but um, Matt, do you want to talk about how long we'll have access to Matic? Yeah, so uh, when you create this, you'll actually have uh, access to Matic for 30 days. You'll see that in the top right-hand corner here. And uh, if you reach out to us and schedule a demo, we will waive the implementation fee for, for Matic. So if you if you like to you know play around with it, create some dynamic content, connect some data sources, we have some really great resources in our help center uh, to be able to do that. So please, we really encourage you to 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 check out the platform itself, uh, build some templates uh, with with the template builder. Uh, definitely uh, excited to to have you guys have access to this for the next thirty days. And also, um, and also uh, the presentation enhancer uh, that we used earlier will be free to everyone that uh, attended the conference today. So you'll be able to keep that and be able to leverage that on your own. Yeah, the Chrome extension link that um, is in the chat if you all uh, want to bookmark that or uh, get that ready to go, or if you already have it. Um, thanks, Silly, that's great. Awesome. Um, so I will move on to uh, the last part uh, part of this session. And I know we're a little bit ahead on time here. Um, oh, I thought there was one more slide. There's not. But there, uh, there's an open Q&A right now. If anyone would like to ex ask any questions uh, or discuss anything, I'm happy to, to take them. I know Matt has a lot of experience with um, several of our customers um, and is a great resource at Matic, but um, just about AI and customer success in general. So if anyone has questions, uh, just let us know. Great. Uh, uh, so I see a question here. Is a paid Matic account required to continue with the enhancer after 30 days? No. So the enhancer is yours free uh, to have even after the 30 days. Uh, only you'll, you'll only lose access to the platform itself where the template builder is. The extension will stay active. Great call out. Great question. Uh, we have another yeah. one. Curious what other template ideas you have seen work well outside of QBR is being built on Matic? Great question. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, we have, uh, I, I mentioned a ton of the one pagers that we use uh, on that. I think specifically some of my favorite ones are just the the year in review ones. Uh, we, we have a one pager that basically we send out after they've been with us for one year. Uh, just highlighting all of the usage and great KPIs over the last year that they've accomplished with us. Um, love the focus on that. We have another one or another template uh, that we use. Uh, I think that's a very important one is kind of the, uh, what is it? the end user listening session. So, you know, we really strive to make sure uh, our customers are getting value. And that includes the end users that, you know, usually we don't always have a lot of interaction with because we're usually working with the admins. So being able to get in front of those people that are the ones actually generating on the platform and getting their feedback and stuff and, you know, taking that and be able to bring back to us to improve our processes, improve our platform and stuff, I think is another really great template um, that, that we leverage as well, uh, along with the, the year in review. Uh, I've got another question here. Is, is there a gain site integration? Yes, we actually do have a gain site integration. Uh, you can find out more actually if you go to if uh, if you go to our help center uh, and search gain site. There should be some more information around uh, 
how we can connect to it and uh, what benefits it comes with. Great. Any other questions, last minute questions for Matt? I know um, uh, in addition to um, the templates you brought up, Matt, um, in the chat, some people were offering suggestions to like success plans, um, internal account reviews. So um, lots of ideas here. Yeah, excellent, all excellent ideas. I do, I actually do love the, um, the internal account review, it, it works really well uh, with Matic because we have connections to, uh, you know, data sources like Salesforce. And so you're able to pull this, the information of your all your accounts um, really, really quickly and uh, be able to review that with your manager. Great. Uh, We've got another question here. Uh, is there a way to resubmit the request if the process exceeds three to five minute mark? In my case, it's been over 10 minutes. Uh, I think that if we, if you just refresh the platform and maybe uh, I might need a little of uh, confirmation on that, but if you just refresh the, the site itself, uh, you should be able to enter in uh, the website again. And if you don't mind, maybe if you could share with us what uh, website you're trying to build this for, we might be able to give you a little bit more insight. Right. Um, I think the last thing to call out um, is it's not just uh, QBRs or um, internal account reviews. There's also ROI, pricing, pitch decks. So great um, chat engagement in the chat today. Um, we appreciate everyone for joining. Thanks, Matt, for going over um, this crawl walk run. Uh, and hopefully you all are walking away with some great content to use. Um, any last minute questions before we end our workshop session today? Great. Um, as I said before, um, everything will be available in our session um, hub and we will notify everyone when that is available in live. Um, thank you again for joining us. And thank you again, Matt, for um, being our speaker. And have a great yeah, thank rest you, of your day, everyone. Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks for the engagement.